How you doing everyone? Welcome back to the viewers who have been keeping up with this project. If you're a new viewer, we're going into the third video on this job. The first one was removing all the foundation plants around this house. There was quite a few plants and we filled my dump trailer up pretty full as you can see. And then the second portion of this project was removing the old set of steps, precast concrete steps, which breaking apart concrete always makes for a good day. And once those steps were out of our way, we were able to break ground and start excavating. Removed all that soil and we started our backfilling process. If you don't know the backfilling process because you're a new viewer, I have quite a few videos on my channel about it. And you can also check out the video previous to this one that's in this playlist. There's a link for the playlist in the description below and that has all the videos of this project up until this one. So now that we're backfilled to height, it's time to pour the concrete footing. Let's get into the day, guys. Okay, we're looking good over here to start setting up for our form for the concrete pad. And I want to just walk you through a little bit of the measurements. This is going to be a 5 foot wide by a 6 feet long or depth set of stairs. And that's going to account for a 4 foot landing and 2 steps at 1 foot at 6 feet if you see this outer line right here, that is six foot and a half inch. And the siding comes out at least a half inch to an inch. So you want to give yourself that half inch um, wiggle room. So you just add it on to your form. So that's the half inch. And uh, where that half inch is, this line will be the front of our granite cap. The cap overhangs the stone veneer by about an inch. And then the stone veneer typically is about an inch to an inch and a quarter. And then you got about a quarter inch uh, bed of mortar on the back of the stone veneer that you want. And behind that, you have your eight inch wide cinder block step uh, block that we will be building the steps out of. The granite treads that we'll be using for the steps are five feet exactly side to side. What I usually do is give myself a good two inches extra on the sides because that's always going to be backfilled anyway. So my front board is going to be cut at five foot two inches. How's that cord management going? Sucks. Got promoted today. <laughs> cord manager. <laughs> trying to untangle it nicely. He's like, shut your camera off. I'll tell you how I really feel. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut all this lumber up and get these forms put together. Okay, so we're using 2x4 form boards. This pad doesn't need to be any thicker than that. We're only doing three steps. If you're doing four steps or more, or like four to six steps, I would probably recommend a six-inch pad. And then anything over six steps, I would definitely go eight to ten inches thick just to make sure you have enough structural integrity to hold up all that weight. Got the boards cut to size and we're screwing them together to create our box and then we're going to install these metal concrete stakes around the edges so that once we get the boards level we can screw them in nice and tight. Now I'm going to show you how we use this six foot level to square off the box. We're going to set up our, our level or straight edge on the back wall. Now that we have that straight edge we can use our big aluminum square here. And we're going to run it along this board and we're going to try to hit it against our straight edge. And as you can see, that is very close. And again, we are right there. So we know our box is square from that technique. Now we have to go over our measurements. And from back to front, we have our six foot and a half, like I was telling you, six feet, four foot landing, two one foot steps, and a half inch to account for the siding that pops out. Five foot, it's like five foot uh, one and three quarter, and that's gonna account for having one inch extra on each side past the overhang of our granite cap to uh, give us a little bit of wiggle room as we build our block and stone veneer work. Anyway, let's show them another double check for getting square. This is where you go from one corner to the other to see if you're squared off. 
we've got 93 and a quarter to this corner. Let's check the other one. And we've got 93 and a quarter to this corner. Okay, so we know we're square. So I've already screwed this side in. So we're gonna use that as our benchmark to get this side level. Ben's gonna lift up the form board to where it needs to be so it's perfectly level side to side. And we're gonna screw it in from the stake over here. Still good? Still good. We're shooting for the six inch um, step down or up into the front door. I'm measuring off the bottom of the level, which is gonna be the top of the concrete footing. We're at 21 and a half. We need 22, because our first block's gonna be eight inches to account for um, it being buried a little bit. So that's gonna be eight plus two more steps, which are gonna be six inch blocks. So 12 and 8 is 20, and then we have a 2-inch cap. So that's going to be 22 inches. So we need to tap each side down a half inch and still stay level. Tell me why it's level, but... Right there. All right. Check it. Check it, check it. on the dot <laughs> bang there it is 22 all right so now we have our measurement correct you see that's level which is what we want we want level side to side when you're looking at it but we want our slope or pitch going forward it's a little bit more than an eighth so we can lift that one up as we screw it in He's gonna lift that up to where an eighth is. Down? Yeah. One more. One more. One more. That's good. Good? Right there. Bang, bang. Eighth of a pitch forward. Level. Benny, yeah. what do you think about the beautiful view here? I love it. Gorgeous, huh? That property was such a pleasure to work at. Gorgeous over there. Nice and quiet neighborhood. Customers have actually lived here since it was built. They bought the land, had it cleared, and had the house built think 20 plus years ago but all we're doing here is throwing some extra stone on the sides to support the board we had a couple low spots in the middle of the box so we added some stone and I compacted it down and now I'm getting set up to install rebar into the foundation of the house pinning the footing to the house is a very important step in this process you don't want to have the the footing basically separate from the house we want it connected to it so we're going to drill the holes and we're going to install the rebar into the holes using anchoring cement, which I'll show you what that looks like in a minute here. But that's a very important step to this process as it adds a ton of structural integrity. We are ready to pour. So I'm going to use the hammer drill to put two rebar pins into the foundation where I place them is about the center of where our block work will be built so it'll have the most support where it's the most necessary and not only do you drill the hole and tap the rebar in so this is the anchoring epoxy it's made by quickcrete and it just goes into a regular caulking gun so you fill your holes with this stuff and then hammer the rebar into it and once it sets it hardens like concrete preventing the rebar from moving so once you fill the hole you just tap the uh rebar into the hole with the anchoring cement and that will all cure and become extremely hard and then I've got this piece of rebar 
just recycled from the old set of steps and just help hold everything together. So we're ready to pour this pad. We're gonna both mix together with one wheelbarrow. One can kind of uh, man the, the water and one can mix and then we can both just kind of work together mixing and pouring. in. Oh, it's easy to get it in now. Yep. There it is. What do you think, Benny? Looks good. What do you think about the drain, dude? Kind of smart? <laughs> yeah, why not? But kind of silly. Should have had it all pitched to the drain. <laughs> like a little bathtub? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the idea behind that is just to uh, leave an area for any water that may build up. Leaves an area for it to permeate down into the subsoil. And that doesn't um, hurt the the structural strength of this pad at all. We got our rebar going around it and in front of it. And unlike concrete finish guys, we don't need to stick around and wait for it to uh, get set so we can edge it and brush it or what, anything like that. We're just gonna let it sit. It can be smooth, rough, as long as it's flat um, to the screed and pitched, we're good to uh, build onto it. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow we're going to go do a different job, so it's going to set tonight, tomorrow, and then Thursday morning we'll be back here with the blocks, the Type S mortar, all that stuff to uh, start building our inner block work, the, the blocks that we will adhere the stone veneer onto. And we will show you guys all about that when we're back here on Thursday. But for now, that's it for the concrete pad pour. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Benny, do you hope they enjoyed the video? Until the next video, you guys already know. Peace. Later, bud.